Okay, folks, this, this is going to be one of my favorite segments right here. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to turn your life around, but you're stuck? Have you been struggling to make ends meet and can't seem to find a way? That's a big problem out there today. Well, my next guest has answers and a lot of secrets to breaking through. She is a six-time best-selling author, one of the most sought-after motivational speakers out there. She's a millionaire entrepreneur, and she is a true inspiration. Please welcome my friend, Lisa Nichols. <laughs> Hey, Lisa. Hey, darling. How so you nice feeling? Nice to see you. Good. I'm wonderful. This is great for you. What's been your biggest accomplishment, you think? Bouncing back, number one, is refusing to listen to the negative chatter in my own head, refusing to uh, listen to other people's perception of me, creating something from absolutely nothing. So I got, you know, there's the books, there's the TV, there's the, all that stuff. But my biggest accomplishment is being willing to give myself a thousand second chances. And every time I got to 999, I pressed reset. Yeah. I didn't ask permission, I gave notice. Yeah. At some point, I have to stop asking, can I be great? Can I be brilliant? Can I be okay and still be accepted? I just stopped asking permission and just gave notice unapologetically, and not in a braggadocious way, not in a way that shrunk anyone else, in right. a way that said, I only got one life, and I'm gonna ride this one till the wheels fall off. And then all the other stuff came. Wow. As a result of a decision I made. Right. But it was a decision. You... It was a decision. But it was, and it didn't come from, you know, a motivational experience. It didn't come from a, an inspiring teacher. It came from hitting rock bottom. Okay. Okay, let's talk about that. Because <laughs> yeah. this was the thing that when you and I were talking that really s struck me. Because I had been there. Yeah. And I just wanted to hear how you had turned yeah. it around. Because you can be rock bottom yeah. and turn it around. That's the best turnaround, because at rock bottom, hell, ain't no other way right. to go. Right. You got to go right. up. So right. that's a great time. You climbed to the top. Tell everybody about this journey. I struggled all through school. The last time I took English class, I got a fail. And my English teacher said I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. The last time I took a speech class, same year, I got a D minus in speech, and my speech teacher said, Lisa, quote, unquote, I recommend you never speak in public that you get a desk job. So that was the beginning of my life. That was, the, that was my 19-year-old experience. And then I go on, and I'm trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. I was obedient. I went and got a job in accounting. I was in the collection department for seven years. Y'all don't know I'm dangerous to accounting. I'm, <laughs> I'm just dangerous. And I'm in collections, and you know, you should never put a broke person in collections. <laughs> Never, because everybody's reasons sound good to me. <laughs> not, not, I know it sounds funny, but it was real. Not only did I say, girl, don't you worry about paying that, I'm going to take your name off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody went to jail because I was in I got fired from five different jobs. Yeah. And then I got pregnant with my son unexpectedly. And then at eight months, my son's father went to prison. I had to get on government's assistance to have my baby. I was on WIC, Women, Infant, and Children, to feed my child. And when my son was eight months old, I went to the ATM to get $20 out the bank because I didn't have any Pampers for him. And in order to get $20 out, you got that $20 in. I had $11.42. And I still can't tell the story without getting emotional because it's my story. Mm -hmm. yeah. For two days, I had to wrap my son in, in a towel. But something happened, Steve, in those two days. I was at rock bottom. I was broke, and I was broken. Inglewood, California, my son laying on his back at eight months. I have a towel over him, and I have my hand on his stomach saying, don't you worry, Jelani. Mommy will never be this broke again. And I made a decision. I was bankrupt. And every stinking thinking I had, I was bankrupt and trying to protect my pride. I was bankrupt and trying to be all that in a bag of chips and a bowl of grits falsified. Mm -hmm. I was bankrupt in trying to not ask anyone for help. I was bankrupt in everything that was holding me and keeping me where I was. Mm -hmm. I've always talked a good game, mm -hmm. but I wasn't doing anything with my gift. Mm -hmm. And all that thing about potential, I was tired of having potential. I wanted to have my now. And I looked at that baby at eight months, and I said, I want to transform your life. Because you didn't ask to come into this chaos. Come on. As an African-American male child in South Central Los Angeles, with a single mother whose father's in prison, he had a 66% chance of going to prison himself, not on my watch. 
Mm. Not on my watch. So if I have to be willing to drastically transform myself so that I can become the woman that I know I can be. Right. And that's what I began to do. I was radical. What did you do, Lisa? What, what did you do to change your life? First, um, I realized I couldn't grow with people who were struggling like me. That whole, I don't want to leave nobody behind. No, I don't want to stay with y'all. Right. You don't even, you don't even want to be here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to be the queen of this block. Yeah. And I became OK with the fact that it doesn't make me any less committed to my community, committed to my culture, committed to my family. The best thing I can do for you is not stay here with you. That's right. When I got that, I went to places I'd never seen before. I went to conferences where people were talking about money, talking about prosperity, yeah. talking about, it was like, no habla espanol, what y'all talking about? ROIs and PPMs and term agreements and capital fundraising and bottom lines and what is it? What, what is, I'm, I'm going to stay until I learn what you're talking about. I went to the same conference 42 times. And there I raised $532,000 in capital for my company to start my dream. And my dream was to transform teen lives. I want to teach teens how to fall madly in love with themselves and how to make integrity-based decisions. And I got it funded, and I started working. And that was the beginning of me rescuing myself. I realized that I am my rescue. No one else is my rescue. Mm. I am yeah. my rescue. That is, see, my daddy's famous line to me was, the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. Right. He said that that was